Um, as an FDIC board member, you were involved in the decision-making related to Silicon Valley Bank and its resolution. During the weekend of March 9th, did you express any views to FDIC Chairman Gruenberg, any member of the FDIC Board of Direction, Directors, any FDIC staff, or officials in the administration regarding the class of banks that should or should not be considered as a viable buyer of Silicon no, Valley Bank? Uh, in a bank failure, particularly, the most efficient way to contain any fallout is to ensure there is continuity. The Bank Merger Act specifically talks about financial stability. It was important if we had a did you, buyer. Did, did you express an opinion uh, that uh, a, a large Wall Street, too big to fail bank should not be in the class of institutions that would be eligible to, to purchase the bank? I think we would have taken any potential okay. buyer. We did not receive a bid. Okay. I, I appreciate your answer. And I, and I ask because when you were FTC commissioner, you submitted a comment to DOJ on bank mergers criticizing those that occurred during the 2008 financial crisis. You opined, quote, Policymakers compounded the damage by orchestrating several more mega mergers, forming even bigger banks, unquote. We also know you used procedural games in December 2021 to try to force a bank merger process review. Did you see the Silicon Valley bank failure as an opportunity to, to take your personal views on, quote, mega mergers and implement them in a real world crisis? No, but uh, uh, what, what you're referring to, I talk about where there was tremendous government assistance. It was a different situation. We were faced with one of the fastest bank failures in history. Yeah, Director, one more time, did. one more time. Did no. you in any way try to influence the FDIC's no, analysis of the bids? We did not receive any bids that weekend for Silicon Valley Bank. We sought to get as many bids as possible. The FDIC's law requires minimizing costs to the deposit insurance fund, and that's what we did. Well, in your role on the FDIC, and we talked a little bit uh, about this offline, some healthy mergers can avoid losses to the DIF. I want you to take that back to Chairman Gruenberg, and we need a better merger process to avoid losses uh, to the DIF, and, and we can talk about that further. Director Chopra, in your new abusive acts and practices policy statement, do you include the following as, a, as fitting into what will now be considered abusive and a violation of consumer financial law. And I'll, I'll ask that you answer yes or no. A, a pop-up or drop-down box? Um, I don't believe by, that by its own is a okay. is violation. Okay, multiple click-throughs? I don't believe that by its own is any violation. I think there was used as a series of examples to look at material interference. What about consumer confusion? Statement. Well, that is part of the statutory. What if it's statute. unreasonable consumer confusion? Unreasonable on the part of the consumer? On the part of the that consumer. That would not be the issue. That would not meet the statutory standard. The standard is, has two prongs with some subprongs. One is material interference with the consumer's ability to navigate. And the second is taking unreasonable advantage. What about customer the support taking too long? Is that abusive? We, ha if, is, if that, is that in the proposed See, your confusion policy? is the problem. Nobody knows what abusive is. We still don't. With the, if you don't know and you're the director and no, you I, issue I, the guidance. I do, we have sought in the proposed policy statement to summarize all of the supervisory actions by state and federal law as well as enforcement to say, this is the body of law we have. We have a common law system in the United yep. States. Uh, let me just, we are seeking to provide as much clarity I, to be responsive I, to Just because I have limited time. These are examples that you say that you're listing, and you can't tell me that whether or not these examples constitute abusive. And complying with these new additions, these examples to the abusive prong, mean that companies will now have to change the way they present information or manage customer services. This means that these institutions have new obligations, and you're not following notice and, and comment rulemaking, and you're imposing new requirements on these by I listing completely these, disagree with that. Well, I know you do. I, I, I know you do. If, if it's not new requirements, here's the problem. It's kind of like the Supreme Court Justice Potter Stewart in 1964 when he was asked to describe his test for obscenity. He said, I know it when I see it. This vague and ill-defined guidance on what abusive me means under UDAP sounds a lot like Justice Stewart's test for obscenity. Abusive is whatever you say it is. It is not, and what we have done is rather, <laughs> Congress wrote the words, it's in statute, we have tried our very best 
to be able to articulate with fidelity to those words, yeah. to give examples my, and facts. My time has expired. You tried, but respectfully, I think you failed. Nobody knows what it well, is. It's what you say it is, and that's the problem.